So this is it, the final moment of truth. It's time to switch on the waterfall. Wish me luck. Well, hello. I uh, went to an aquatic shop on the way home from work and went to see if there's any marginal plants reduced to clear and I ended up buying three koi. Um, two of them are nicely coloured, one's got metallic fins, the other one's got really nice markings and I've bought a dark koi with big scales. I'm infatuated with dark fish, I've got a mirror carp and a common carp which are both dark and now I've got a dark koi. So yeah, I'm going to add those now and I'll see you in a bit. Well I've left them to acclimatise and two of the buggers have escaped, so there's only one with the metallic fins left in the bag. So I'll let him go now and he can go back off and join his friends. Now when the koi were in the holding tank there was no filtration so I kept the feeding to a minimum. Now I've got them back in the pond, I'm feeding them twice a day with wheat germ pellets to try and bulk them up for winter. So I took the opportunity to do a little bit of filming. So when I compare the underwater footage to the footage back in July, there really is a difference. Increasing my flow rate from 5,000 litres an hour to 10,000 litres an hour really has improved the filtration of the pond. So I'm hoping as the pond matures, I'll be able to maintain the clarity of the water. Well, that's enough inspiration now. Let's get back to building the pond. My first job to do was to finish the shallow feeding bay above the fish house. Now I've found the hardest thing in life is to try and recreate nature. So when I'm building my scape, I'm trying to look for the nicest rocks and the most natural looking rocks. As this is going to be the main focal point of the pond, I'm spending extra time making sure that it looks as natural as it can be. Which does take a lot longer than what you expect. At the moment it just looks like a pile of rocks. But once the plants and the mosses are added, it'll all blend in and it'll look far more natural. Now it's just time to finish it off with the gravel and a little bit of pebbles, just so no liner was on show. And once that section was done, it was time to do the rear of the pond and the waterfall. Now the waterfall has got triple layers, it's got the normal pond liner that's underneath, it's got some carpet underlay over the top of that, and then the final layer is the rubber EPDM liner, just so it's strong enough to handle all the rock placements. Now the waterfall, it was the inspiration on me rebuilding my pond. When I look back to Mark from any ponds videos, he has really nice scaping of the pond and his waterfalls are really nice and natural looking. So I was hoping when I build my pond that I'll replicate that and get it somewhere near his standard. With everything rocked out apart from the waterfall, it felt like I was on the final stretch. Now when it comes to building the waterfall, it was the bit I was most looking forward to, yet it was the bit I was most nervous about. I have a mental picture of how I want the waterfall, but trying to create it with the rocks is another story. It's all about getting the layers right and, get, and trying to visualise where the water is going. So I have to keep on going back to check and see what it looks like from a distance and then go back and readjust it. So when doing the waterfall we basically have the liner and then we put rocks over the top and then to encourage the water to go over the rocks rather than underneath them we use this. It's landscape foam. So this is DAP touch and foam landscape. 
and what you do is you put it squirt it round the bottom of the rocks and in the gaps so that way when the water flows it'll basically flow over the rocks rather than underneath them and what we do is we add gravel tack it in when it's when the foam's tacky we put it in there so it disguises it and that way it makes a better waterfall so i'm gonna add that now So this is it, final moment of truth. It's time to switch on the waterfall. Wish me luck. So as the water cleared from the residue from the gravel, I had a good look at the waterfall. I could see that the water was flowing nicely over the rocks and the whole scape was doing pretty well. I know that as time progresses, the gravel will harbour beneficial bacteria and it will further aid my filter. And the waterfall going over the spill stone adds extra oxygen to the pond. So overall, it was a great success. So the next thing to do was to clear the garden. So that's all the rubbish tidied up now so the only bits I've got left are the bits to go around the pond so my next bit to do is to bury the piping um, around that the water flows through from the pump to the filter and then I can basically dress it all up with the gravel and plant plants so I'm gonna go and do that now so yeah I've buried the pipe from the waterfall pump filter all the way around and down to there I've got to do down the bottom a bit more rocking and gravel to do and got to do over in that corner just a bit on the waterfall um, and cleared quite a bit of the garden even though it doesn't look it Oh, getting there. 